Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. The Jim Harbaugh era at the University of Michigan is over tonight. The former Wolverine football head coach making his return to the NFL. Word came tonight that Harbaugh has accepted a job to be the new head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers. Glad you're with us at 11. I'm Devin Skillian. I'm Kimberly Gill. Let's get over to Bernie with more on Harbaugh's decision to head back to the pros here. Yeah, I, I think once Michigan won the national championship mm -hmm. in Houston earlier this month, you got the distinct feeling Jim Harbaugh needed a new challenge. After all, he won it all in college but he had not done so in the NFL. Well, now he gets his chance. Tonight, Harbaugh agrees to a five-year deal. He's the new head coach of the L.A. Chargers. We've got highlights of Harbaugh, led Michigan to three straight outright Big Ten titles, spent nine seasons in Ann Arbor as the head coach, and, of course, topped it all off with that national championship win over Washington on January 8th. Harbaugh said in a statement tonight, my love for Michigan playing there and coming to, back to coach there leaves a lasting impact. I'll always be a loyal Wolverine. Athletic Director Ward Manuel said in a statement, we've been discussing a new contract that would make Jim the highest paid coach in college football. In the end, he wanted to explore and ultimately decided to pursue a return to coaching in the NFL. Now the question is who will replace Harbaugh at Michigan? According to sources there, Sharon Moore is the leading candidate to place Harbaugh. Moore was in for four of the six games which Harbaugh missed after being suspended. Moore uh, was Michigan's offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. This move, uh, there are a lot of jobs open in the mm -hmm. NFL. The, the Chargers seem to be, in real estate terms, move-in ready for yeah. the right they coach, right? They got a good right? quarterback, right? Oh, a franchise got, quarterback? They have a fantastic quarterback, but one who has had no direction. And of course, Harbaugh's nickname is the quarterback whisperer because mm -hmm. everywhere yeah. he goes, he to Andrew Luck, uh, Colin Kaepernick, J.J. McCarthy. He has t turned around players. He is the whisperer. So this is the perfect position for him with for that guy waiting there. Perfect for the Chargers. It's just made. It's just too bad Michigan loses out on him. But Sharon yeah. Moore, if he's the guy, proved that he could run this team and run a program. You'd be a little shocked so. if it wasn't Sharon yeah. Moore at this point. I you? think so, yeah. And the other thing was uh, Harbaugh, I always felt... Remember when he won and he said, no, now I'll be able to sit at the grown-up yeah. table? Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I don't ever think he really believed that until he went to Super Bowl. So I think uh, he still, yeah. he may mm -hmm. have a seat close to the grown-up table, <laughs> right, but, but I think he wants to be a full participant. Yeah. 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 Well, and his brother so. could go one more up on him yeah, this well, year because the Ravens yeah. are still still playing. Yeah. yeah. All right, Bernie. Uh, meantime, reaction pouring in from fans on our website. Click on Detroit.com. Mark A. writes, we will all wait. We will all miss Jim, but he saw bigger horizons with the NIL and the transfer portal. It's getting harder for coaches in this era. Yeah. A lot of work recruiting and keeping players. I pray for the best for him and his family. Thank you. Thank you for all the fun watching your teams. And N.K. Rempa writes, thanks for the terrific memories, Jim, and good luck with the Chargers. Hashtag go blue. Our continuing coverage continues with more from Bernie a little later on in sports. And we'll also have uh, some complete statements from Jim Harbaugh and Ward Manuel on our website at clickondetroit.com. Hope you will join us tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. on Local 4 Plus. Michigan great Jamie Morris will join Jason and Rhonda for a live interview and his thoughts on where Michigan goes from here. Mm. All right, our other big story tonight is the weather. 4-1 weather team tracking more fog against South, uh, around southeast Michigan. Yeah, look at that shot. It looks ominous there. <laughs> Brian Sherman is in for Kim Adams tonight. He's uh, tracking a dense fog advisory for the area. Hi, Brian. Hi there, Kimberly and Devin. That's right. Our dense fog advisory continues for all of southeastern Michigan until 11 o'clock tonight as visibilities could go below a quarter of a mile through the overnight and as we're heading out the door early tomorrow morning. Already visibility down to a half mile in Pontiac, eight-tenths of a mile in Gross Eel, as well as over in Ann Arbor, eight-tenths of a mile in Howell, and down to a half mile as you work into Flint. Use your low beams, give yourself some extra time heading out the door tomorrow morning, but I'm really not concerned about any icy roads like there were up in Oakland and Macomb counties this morning and freezing fog as temperatures have held steady into the mid to upper 30s for the entire evening, and we're not going to fall much further overnight tonight into early tomorrow morning. We'll start off into the mid 30s tomorrow and only head into the upper 30s by tomorrow afternoon. While we're dry for most of the day, rain showers move in late tomorrow night and some of them could be heavy overnight Thursday and into early on Friday morning. I'll break down when that rain moves into your neighborhood and when we finally could start to clear some of this fog. The details in your full foreign forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Kimberly and Devin. All right, Brian. Tonight, Governor Whitmer touted her accomplishments over the past year and delivering her
sixth State of the State address. She also laid out her policy vision for this year. Will Jones picks up our coverage from Lansing tonight with reaction from both sides. Devin and Kimberly, Governor Whitmer spoke for nearly 42 minutes going through a list of policy proposals from education, caregiving to housing. It's clear Governor Whitmer has high hopes for what she and the Democrats can accomplish this year. Governor Whitmer hearkening it back to the 80s, drawing parallels between her 2023 policy record and classic rock albums of that decade. Over the past year, our record, like any great album, had something in it for everyone. This year, seniors will keep more of what they earned, and hundreds of thousands of working families will get refund checks, putting money back in their pockets to help with groceries or gas or home repairs. The governor spent the majority of her state of the state listing her policy priorities for this year, with education, pre-K for four-year-olds, two years ahead of schedule, and free community college for Michigan high school graduates. On taxes, a new caregiver tax credit, which she says could save Michigan families up to $5,000. Moving to housing, Whitmer wants to build more single-family homes, apartments, and mixed-use buildings. We got into the groove last year, but great bands do not rest on their laurels. They make the next record better than the last one. So there's a lot of overlap in terms of what we want to continue to do as House Democrats and what the governor is proposing. Metro Detroit Republicans didn't like Whitmer and the Democrats' 2023 record, and they're saying they're not buying into this year's release. I would like to see, instead of a tax credit, how about an income tax reduction? Because wouldn't it be great just to keep that money in my pocket in the first place? As I was ticking through, what she was talking about is cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. I spoke with one Metro Detroit Republican and asked if there was anything she liked in Whitmer's speech. She paused and then she said Whitmer's show of support for the lines. From Lancy, Will Jones, Local 4. All right, Will, we are following breaking news just into our newsroom. A Michigan state trooper has died after a crash in Saginaw County. Investigators said the trooper stopped someone on I-75 at Birch Run Road when he was hit by a car. He was taken to the hospital, but that is where he died. The trooper's name has not yet been released pending notification of his family. All right, we'll continue to follow that throughout the night. Meanwhile, opening statements begin tomorrow morning in the trial of the mother of the Oxford High School shooter. Jennifer Crumbly faces four counts of involuntary manslaughter. Today, the 17-person jury was seated. As Sean Lay shows us, we're learning more about how they were chosen. The jury, now seated, been told to come right back here to the Oakland County Courts Building, 8.30 tomorrow morning sharp. More instructions for the jury from the judge, and then the jury will be sworn in, and this trial will get going right away. Let me take you a little deeper into this process of seating this jury. The jury breaks down like this. Ten women, seven men, mostly parents on this jury, and okay with firearms, they say. Most with a hunting background, parents hunted or they've hunted or hunt with their children. And when asked if they had an opinion about Jennifer Crumley, all said no, not until they see and hear all the evidence in this case. Opening arguments in this trial begin tomorrow. Let me show you three key questions the jury pool was asked. Questions like, how will you deal with going back home to friends and family after a verdict if they do not agree? Almost everyone said they would not have a problem with that because they looked at the evidence presented. Jennifer Crumley is sitting right here. Do you think she must have done something criminal or innocent? Everyone said she's innocent until proven guilty. They're ready to see the evidence. Another key question, as a parent, has your child or teen ever snuck something by you? Some said no. Others say yes, teens can sneak things by you. It's almost impossible to monitor everything on their phone. I was able to quickly ask a member of the prosecution team, a lawyer, and one of the lawyers helping the defense team, if they think this trial will get going right after the jury is sworn in around 8.30 tomorrow morning. They say they are ready. They think that could happen 8.30 sharp. Sean Lay, Local 4. All right, Sean, and just a reminder, you can follow this case every day on Local 4 Plus and click on Detroit.com. Download the Local 4 Plus app on your television, wherever you get your streaming apps. You can also stream through ClickOnDetroit.com. Family of a woman hit and killed by a DDOT bus in downtown Detroit back in June has now filed a lawsuit. Family of Janice Bauer is suing the city of Detroit, DDOT, the driver's union, and the bus driver herself, Geraldine Johnson. 
Security camera footage shows Bauer being struck as it rounded the corner of Griswold and Congress after learning the driver was also involved in seven other crashes, one that was fatal. The family says they knew something had to be done. We thought we, we need to do something because that wasn't enough to make a change. At the policies and procedures that allow for a DDOT bus driver to take time off work for a year and a half and then return with basically an expunged record is ridiculous. Noteworthy here, this suit does not seek money, but rather changes to DDOT hiring policies. President Joe Biden picks up a big endorsement in his re-election campaign. The UAW President Sean Fain is endorsing. The president addressed the union this afternoon at its annual conference in Washington, D.C. He won UAW endorsement in 2020, despite many members supporting former President Donald Trump. Biden has previously called himself the most pro-union president. In September, you may remember he joined UAW members on the picket line during the eight-month-long strike.